you feel you shoulder much of the blame. Neil O'Donnell has changed his stripes. Now a Bengal. The Steelers still remember that Super Bowl heartbreak. Today, they meet O'Donnell for the first time. There's no bigger game for the Bengals and their fans than when the Pittsburgh Steelers come to Cincinnati. Synergy Field sold out. Pre-game pleasantries with Neil O'Donnell, the former Steeler quarterback, and Bill Cowher and Cordell Stewart. But you know that won't last. Don Cricky with Bill Reese. The Steelers come in averaging only 12 and a half points a game, but they're three and one because their defense, in the words of Ricky Waters of Seattle, is ferocious. There's none better. And today, Beasley, that defense is going after O'Donnell big time. Uh, Neil O'Donnell has been very careful not to say anything that will upset the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's why you call a guy a very smart quarterback. He says he is prepared for this game like any other, but guess what? I've been in this situation. He wants this to be a big day, a special day. Meanwhile, Cordell Stewart is still waiting for a breakout game in this 98 season. The young quarterback of the Steelers, but he knows he's surrounded by great young talent. And he's ready to have that big day, I think, Beasley. Well, we spoke to him yesterday. He said, I have got to realize I'm a second-year quarterback. I'm not going to be perfect. Just relax and let it flow. Now, if you take a look at his numbers from last year, they are pretty consistent. You take a look at the total yards. They are about the same. They're sure he had twice the touchdowns. He's thrown half the interceptions. But take a look at this one. This is the big one. The big one is they've got a winning record at 3-1. and one. And the Bengals have won the toss and they will receive to start the game here at Synergy Field. And there is Norm Johnson, the 16 year veteran from UCLA, ready to kick the ball off for the Steelers. And back deep, we've got a couple of speed men. Tremaine Mack, number 34, from Miami of Florida, who's run back a kickoff 97 yards for a touchdown this year. And Eric Bianami up front to block. Here is Tremaine Mack from the six yard line, bobbles the ball. Steelers special teams tackling has been excellent all season and it is again as Matt and his threat cut down at the 20 yard line up to make the hit was linebacker John Fiala and here comes Neil O'Donnell who last was on the field with the Steelers when he was one of them back in Super Bowl 30 the offensive line and wide receivers and Kyle Pickens and Darnay Scott two standouts Corey Dillon one of the best young runners in the NFL. Milne will be the blocker. The Bengals feel they can run the ball on the Pittsburgh defense, but we'll see. They came out running and with some success as Corey Dillon, a big bat from the University of Washington, who had a sensational rookie season, is stopped by 99. Levon Kirkland, the consensus all pro inside linebacker. Looking at the Steeler defense. Which grades out among the very best again in the NFL. Orpheus Roy playing well. So are Joel Steed and Keevan Henry in the down three. And the linebackers standouts all fast. They can run and hit. Second down. Long five. Trying to turn the corner is Corey Dillon. And he is going to be taken down at about the 26-yard line by the 275-pound linebacker, LeVon Kirkland, who runs as fast as any linebacker out there. Well, Levon Kirkland runs a 4740. It's it's hard to believe that a man 275 pounds moves the way he does. But boy, he's a great one. He moves great, and he's got a great attitude about football. He's got a great attitude about life. Inspiring guy to be around. One of the leaders of the Steelers. Third down. O'Donnell needs about four. A quick throw, and he makes the connection. Beautifully done. As he guns the ball into Damon Gibson. And it is a first down for the Bengals out to the 32 yard line. Lethon Flowers came up to make a stunning hit. It was Lethon Flowers who reportedly said, O'Donnell owes us an apology for the last Super Bowl. Then Beasley, he recanted and said he never said that. Five wide receivers in the game. The Bengals spread the defense of Pittsburgh in order to get that quick throw, and O'Donnell delivers it perfectly. Actually, the guy you owed an apology to was Damon Gibson for that hit. 
What a shot, but it's a first down. O'Donnell on the pitch back. Here comes Corey Dillon turning wide. And coming across to make the stop is a Keevan Henry. The right defensive end in his sixth year from Mississippi State. Well, this is a uh, very impressive drive, young drive by the Bengals. They have mixed it up. There's been a nice little quick pass, a couple of nice running plays. Uh, number 71 on the offensive line, Willie Anderson, with a nice pull block in front of Corey Dillon. Very nice play calling. The Bengals, who've struggled on offense and gotten into early holes in their last game, they were down 21-0 at Baltimore in the first quarter. They came out with a very spirited offense, going to the whole playbook, and there is the quick out for the great receiver, Kyle Pickens. And Pickens is out close to the 40-yard line. Carl Pickens saw something before the play even started. Carl Pickens, look at him, signaling in to Neil O'Donnell, telling him to watch the quick blitz. Oh, that's good game planning during the week. They knew exactly what they were going to do in that situation. Nice throw, nice catch. Good game. Good game. It brings up third down and a long uh, two, almost three. There was Pickens, 419th career reception, the most ever for a Bengal receiver. O'Donnell from the shotgun stands in. He's on the run. He doesn't like to. Neil O'Donnell though, gets ahead and gets out close to the 45-yard line, and he has another Cincinnati first down. Lost his helmet, but he's back standing tall, ready to run the offense. Well, this is excellent coverage. It's, it's well blocked. I mean, look at the time that O'Donnell has here. When he decides to tuck it under, he does the right thing, sliding, because these guys would like to take a shot at him. But Neil O'Donnell is managing the football game. Managing the football game. Well, he's a very accurate passer. His career stats are absolutely stunning. 93 career touchdown passes, only 54 interceptions. He ranks in the top 20 passers all time. This time, Pickens is fouled as the ball comes in. And uh, Dwayne Washington, number 20, is called for the foul. And as Pickens told us yesterday, Beasley, uh, we're going to have to get open quick because this Steeler rush is too fast. You don't have time to look downfield. Uh, Pass you interference. Number 20, defense. That's a first down. Tom White, our referee. Dwayne Washington is a rookie. He's playing some very good football. Look at him squat on his pattern. Why does he squat? Because he knows that Neil O'Donnell is not going to have a lot of time. He's expecting a short pattern. That's what he got. He just got there too early. Well, the Bengals are moving on this opening drive. A third first down. This one on penalty. Another out. It's Pickens. And they're looking to break Pickens free, but those sure hard-hitting Pittsburgh defend defensive backs knock him down for little or no gain. The good thing for Cincinnati, they are managing the game very well. They are taking what the defense gives them. The good thing for Pittsburgh, they are forcing this Cincinnati offense to be perfect, to go three yards, three yards, four yards for a first down. And so far, Cincinnati's been able to do it. O'Donnell and the Steelers remember so vividly Super Bowl 30, his two interceptions in the second half by the Cowboys. Led to 14 Dallas points and the Cowboys 27 17 win ball on the field and they rule it is incomplete. The fullback Brian Milne a third year blocker out of Penn State had the ball but they ruled he did not have possession. So it goes as an incomplete pass third see, down and seven. See there's the mistake and finally Pittsburgh gets Cincinnati in the position they want them third and medium you can't call third and seven long but that drop that would have been a first down so the fullback Milne commits the first error in this ball game. The blocking was superb by the offensive line of the Cincinnati Bengals. Now beware the Steeler Blitzers. They're here, they're there, they're everywhere. Here comes Darren Perry. And O'Donnell is swept under by the Steeler Blitz at the 42-yard line. It's a furious assault on the quarterback. The Steelers waiting for offense already have a great defense again on the field. Look at them coming. Everybody's on the way, and that's what I talked about a few minutes ago. This defense forces you to be perfect. If you don't drop a pass like Milne did, you've got a first down. They made one mistake, put them in third and long, and they got in trouble. And that brings up fourth down and 17. So back to punt is Lee Johnson, who's been hitting the ball as he always does extremely well. Left footer out of BYU booms it downfield. It's a low punt. It'll be run back, and Jaheen is back in the lineup for the Steelers and running it back. Jaheen Arnold, who's been out since the preseason with a fractured collarbone, 
He gets a seven yard return tackled by Foley and Simmons. Anderson the running backs coach talks to Neil O'Donnell but then it's stalled on the drop ball and uh, now the Steelers get it for the first time Beasley. That was just the uh, the one mistake in that drive. Now we'll see a really a mirror image defense from Cincinnati. They run the same defensive principle. And the Bengals come with a blitz. And somehow Cordell Stewart is able to get the ball away for an incomplete pass because he would have been swept under. Michael Bankston was on him as soon as he turned to throw the ball. Number 90. <laughs> take, a, take a look at Bankston and company here. I mean, just really everybody breaks free. Bankston is free because there were so many blitzers, more blitzers than blockers. And as I told you, Cincinnati will blitz as early and often as Pittsburgh. So it is now second down and 10. Cordell Stewart comes in completing just under 50% of his passes. Only two touchdown throws. He's been intercepted six times. And there's the bus. Jerome Bennett. Who's rushed for over 100 yards every time he's played against the Bengals as a Steeler. That's four previous times. As we look at the Steelers on offense, the all pro Dermonte Dawson at center. Alan Fanica, a rookie, starts at left guard. They had to make some changes because Will Wolford is out at left tackle. Strelzik moves over there. Cordell Stewart, who will be 26 years old next week. 32 touchdowns last year. He passed for 21, he ran for 11. Here comes the rush, and look at these Bengals come. Reinhard Wilson, number 55, and Javon Langford. As all of a sudden the Bengals with a full tank come out roaring. <laughs> well, Dick LeBeau is the defensive coordinator of the Bengals. He was the defensive a leader and designer for the Pittsburgh Steelers for many years. He knows this team inside and out, and boy, he came up with a blitz there. As uh, Cordell told us yesterday, Beasley, we're playing against our defense. There's nothing about it we don't know, but the speed you can't account for. And now here's a ball boomed downfield by punter Josh Miller. Tremaine Mack. He can go. Mack turns the corner, and finally, speed from the Steelers runs him down. As coming across the field to get him was number 54 of Pittsburgh, Dante Jones. The NFL on CBS continues in a moment. Reese, this is Don Crickey back at Cincinnati. Former Steeler Neil O'Donnell ready to start a second Bengal drive. They moved the ball well, then stalled in front of the Pittsburgh. O'Donnell hands off to the big back Corey Dillon. Makes on tacklers a punishing runner like his counterpart with the Steelers. Jerome Bettis is as he runs into the uh, left side of the Pittsburgh defense Orpheus Roy was on the stop along with the Darren Perry number 39 there is Jim Hazlitt the former Buffalo Bills linebacker who is the defensive coordinator of the Steelers. Back to the run on second and five and look at Corey Dillon spin off tacklers and bang ahead. For a gain of close to four yards, he is out near the 34-yard line. Not too short of the first down. Earl Holmes, a linebacker, got him. Well, this is just a very good job by the offensive line. You see the lineman pulling from the other backside. That's Strelzik, who's moved over from right to left. And Corey Dillon, for the second play in a row, does a 360 spin to gain about maybe two, three extra yards. That's good running. He's a hard hitter. Corey Dillon averaged over... Ran for over 1,100 yards as a rookie, even though he played sparingly in the first eight games. There he goes again, and his offensive lineman will tell you, if you don't get out of Corey Dillon's way, he'll run right through you, too. He runs his own interference. A big tough back from Washington. Averaged 116 yards a game rushing in the last eight games last year. Well, this is an old-fashioned toss sweep, and uh, really just a good job by Corey to hustle. He doesn't get enough, but... What, like you said, he's a big back with considerable speed. That time he couldn't get to the first down mark. He was the AFC Rookie of the Year. Rushed for a rookie record, an all-time NFL record of 246 yards against Tennessee last year. Did Corey Dillon broke the record of Jim Brown. Here's a punt hit downfield. 
Jaheen Arnold drops it, looks for a blocker, turns it up. And very good special teams play by the Cincinnati Bengals as he's knocked out of bounds at the 19 yard line. 53 yard punt, the return just six. Cincinnati has the Steelers going offense for the second time now with a revamped offensive line because of injuries. That's how it normally looks two weeks ago when they last played before the bye week. And now today with Wolford out, Strelzy goes to left tackle, rookie Allen Panic at left guard. Jermaine Stevens moves to right tackle as the starter. The bus, Jerome Dennis breaks it, but a penalty mark is fired in by the referee Tom White. It was an eight-yard gain on the play, but it's coming back as you see the holding call signaled against the Steelers. That stops the clock with 6.56 to play Holy. in the first quarter. Number 67, offense, half the distance to the goal, first down. Jermaine Stevens, a former number one draft choice who hasn't done it yet, is starting at right tackle. He's called for the hold. Jermaine Stevens went through a real, a very rigorous offseason of weightlifting, uh, looking for an opportunity. I saw him make a heck of a block, but now I see why he <laughs> <laughs> He aided his cause with a little uh, illegal activity. On first and 20, the handoff goes to Bettis. Fighting for yards, Jerome Bettis loves to get the ball, play after play. Told us yesterday, if he doesn't get it at least 20 times a game, he doesn't feel like he needs to shower. <laughs> he really has to. <laughs> now watch the blocking. This is number 67, Jermaine Stevens again, with nice position, good lead blocking on the inside. And uh, you know, continuing our dis about our discussion with uh, Jerome Bettis, he expects to be the workhorse. I mean, he wants it 25, 28 times a game, and he's going to get it. Too much is not enough for big Jerome Bettis. Here he comes again. The bus hangs ahead, and Jerome Bettis cuts back and gets across the 20. But still, that'll bring up third and long because of the penalty. All at the 21-yard line. Jerome Bettis in his sixth year from Notre Dame. He has been the Steelers MVP both seasons with them in 96 and 97. Just beautiful blocking on the play again. The Steelers offensive line, the pulls and the traps and the complicated movements that they make are the best in the league. That was a good example of it. Third down. Cordell and the Steelers need eight. They make the play. Charles Johnson, the sure-handed one from Colorado, where he played with Cordell Stewart. The fearless one in Charles Johnson. He'll go into the teeth of any defense head first, and he makes a great play for a first down. This is not a good sign for the Cincinnati Bengals because Charles Johnson needs to be Cordell Stewart's go-to guy. They say that, that Cordell Stewart is struggling a little bit because of the loss of Yancey Thigpen. Yancey Thigpen in these critical third and eight situations was his go-to guy. So Charles Johnson connecting with Cordell Stewart there. That's a good sign for Pittsburgh. Yeah, Bill Cowher says Cordell has to get used to life without Yancey. He's now a Tennessee Oiler. Here's a throw and a catch. As all of a sudden, laser sharp throws by Cordell Stewart coming in too low for the defense to make a play on the ball. This one to Courtney Hawkins, good for 16 yards. This is good blocking up front, and I'm telling you, Bengals, don't let young Cordell Stewart realize That's right. that he's okay because this throw is low and inside, which is nice for the wide receiver. When you're coming over the middle, you want to slide underneath all of those knockout blows. That's a great throw. Right on the numbers of Courtney Hawkins, the seventh year receiver from Michigan State. Here comes the bus. Bettis hangs across midfield and gets down close to the 47 yard line. A first down carry, good for five. Tackled by the rookie starter, Artrell Hawkins, who played for the nearby Cincinnati Bearcats. Here's a guy, Beasley, that didn't even make first team all conference in Conference USA. And he's starting as a rookie in the NFL. Some people are late developers, late bloomers, and Artrell is having a real good season. I mean, a lot of people pick on him because he's playing opposite Ashley Ambrose, but he's standing up to it. And Artrell, as a kid growing up in Johnstown, dreamt his whole life about playing for the Steelers. Here's another throw. They said uh, 
But Cordell Stewart had his best week of practice he's had since last year, and it's showing up in this drive. I tell you, he looks sharp. The only thing I don't see is that Cordell Stewart laugh. You know, the smile that he has when he's really had. Oh, I almost saw it right there. <laughs> you know, that smile that he has when he's really on and comfortable. Uh, Cordell Stewart is a guy feeling his way. There it is. Uh oh. I saw the smile. <laughs> he's, he's an impressive guy when he walks yes, in the room and starts to talk. Well, and he's so honest. I mean, that, guys like that, sometimes you have to worry about what they're going to say. He was so honest with us talking about how he just needs to relax, try not to be Mr. Perfect, and just let it flow. Best drive of the game now for the Steelers. First down and 10, no score, first quarter. Cordell to Bettis getting low at 256 pounds. He's inside the 40. And now while we have a moment, we're heading to New York and to Jim Nance. Jim. Well, thank you, Don. What a way to begin a career. Rookie running back Robert Edwards has rushed for a touchdown for the fifth game in a row. And that's a record in the NFL since they kept that mark back in 1970. Patriots up on the Chiefs. Let's go back to Don and Beasley. Thank you Jim and the critics this summer were questioning the choice of Robert Edwards from George as the number one kick by the Patriots. He's paying off as the regular season unfolds. Cordell with play fake takes a look. And does the right thing. Good defense by the Bengals. Nobody to go to as James Francis came on a hard charge. See I think that was a bad adjustment to your quarterback in trouble by number 88 Courtney Hawkins. I mean Cordell had plenty of room. I mean he bought himself a lot of time had Courtney Hawkins converted deep. They might have had a big play here. Now watch this play. Here's Courtney. Now just imagine you saw Cordell Stewart in your picture. All right now right now watch the adjustment that Courtney makes. He makes this adjustment where there are people. Had he have turned up field there's no telling what might have happened. And so at this play makes it third down and eight. Oh, and a catch, and inside the 30, first down Pittsburgh Steelers. Sam Shade makes the tackle, but the elusive five foot nine inch Courtney Hawkins makes the play. That was not good, Don. I know people in Pittsburgh are, are high fiving each other, sitting on the couch right now. But number 40, Myron Bell had that man doubled. That was a bad throw by Cardell Stewart that he got away with. Number 40, Myron Bell should have picked that off and be running down the other way right now. And Myron Bell, the former Steeler, was a teammate of Courtney Hawkins at Michigan State. First and ten, scoreless game, but the Steelers are moving the ball. Now an Aaron throw, incomplete at the 29. The Steelers come into this game ranked number 30, last in pass offense, and number 28 overall offense. Averaging only illegal use of hands. To the head, number 68, 10 yard penalty, first down. Brendan Stey, the right guard from Nebraska, who's been getting very high grades again this year, is flagged for going to the head. So that'll set the Steelers back. That could be a drive killer. Well, that's a, that's a huge, that's a huge mistake. Watch Brendan, number 68. Now he sets up perfectly. Everything's all right. As he starts to get bull rushed right here, he does the only thing he, that he has left to slow a man down, and that's to turn his head up. So. Uh, you know, you certainly can't do that, as you mentioned, Don. That can be a drive play. First down and 20. Bettis taking people with him. Jerome Bettis, who told us yesterday when we asked him about the two young linebackers, the two first rounders starting, and they combined on that stop, Ryan Simmons and Tokyo Spock, he said, I have to hope to have a, a special hello for them. Well, he would like to say hello in his special way, <laughs> and he's. <laughs> He doesn't really get to do it right here because he's going to the ground when they hit him. But you know the key to that little matchup Bettis is 250 and the two linebackers the rookies are 230 and 233. So he's 10 15 20 pounds bigger than the middle linebackers. And he's getting a lot of work like he likes Beasley six carries already averaging five a pop. Ordell Stewart takes a look fires a fastball and James Francis the linebacker. Had it on his fingertips but couldn't hold on. And that's the second bad throw. That's the second bad throw by young Cardell Stewart. That went right off the fingertips of James Francis into tremendous traffic. And the guy who really set up the uh, errant throw was Brian Simmons, the rookie linebacker from North Carolina who got the big rush on Cordell Stewart. They call Simmons 
A silent assassin. Oh, Doesn't say a lot, but he's coming oh, hard. I don't like those kind. I don't he's, like those kind. <laughs> that is the key. You know, you don't. Maybe you don't want to try to get all of this third and 12, third and 13. Just get your team in position for the field goal and hope somebody breaks a tackle. Down pass goes to Courtney Hawkins. Blockers in front. Hawkins weaving his way inside the 25-yard line. He's down to about the uh, 22, a 10-yard gain. But it leaves the Steelers with fourth down and about two to go for the first down. So it looks like Norm Johnson and the field goal unit are due out. But there's some delay in sending them out. Well, they may be thinking crazy thoughts I think right they now. They are. I think they're looking to go. He's not coming out. Are they going to call timeout? Well, there's some uh, discussion going on. That'll be the end of the quarter, so they have a bit of time to talk it over. The end of the first quarter with the score the Steelers nothing, the Bengals nothing will return to Synergy Field right after this message. Norm Johnson getting set to come out now. They think it over, discuss it, and they send their field goal kicker out. Johnson, as you see, five of seven this season with a long of 49. Big kicker and very experienced. He's only two of four from 40 plus. The hold here will be at the 40 yard line, at the 30, which will make it a 40 yard field goal. And set down are good, and Norm Johnson booms it through. That would have been good from 60. And the Steelers take the lead. 3 0. The Steelers kick off when the NFL on CBS continues. Natty, where Norm Johnson's 40 yard field goal early in the second quarter opened the scoring in this game. And now Johnson's ready to kick off for the Steelers as they have a 3 0 lead. Tremaine Mack is back deep for the Cincinnati Bengals. Bengals come into the game 29th on defense, but they've held the Steelers down for the most part to just three points so far. Here comes Matt. Legs churning, piston pumping, and he's out across the 25 yard line. A penalty marker is thrown in as Dante Jones makes another special teams tackle for the Steelers, number 54, Dante Jones. And now we have a call against Pittsburgh. Usually is against the return team, and Coach Cower wants to see what this is all about. Since Face Bill mask, number 86, five-yard penalty. Timeout. If you're playing the Steelers, it's not good to have them score first, Beasley. As you know, the Steelers are 42 and four under Cower when they score first. Bengals with the ball, first down and ten. Corey Dillon. At 225 pounds, weaving into the Steeler defense, he's across the 35-yard line to the 37. An interesting meeting we had yesterday, Beasley Reese, with Carl Pickens, the standout receiver for the Bengals, who has never missed a practice, never missed a game, and uh, he said, you know, he's getting tired of losing. No. Well, it, it really wears on the guy. I mean, he's one of the great wide receivers in the league. He's been very loyal to this team now for seven years. He says that if he doesn't see major changes to commitment to winning, he's going to uh, take a look at some free agent offers in the offseason. Incomplete pass. They try to get it to Dylan getting back to the pick and story. Uh, we asked him how long his contract has to go. He right away said 12 and a half weeks. I mean that's pretty specific. He, he gave us everything but the days and the hours to the time that uh, he'll be able to take a look around. Now when we spoke to Cosit about it he said his response was you know well he has he's, first of all he said he has all the respect in the world for Carl Pickens but he said if you're having a problem with losing get in the end zone more. So yeah, right. <laughs> this is a story that will develop as this season goes on but it's a huge story here in Cincinnati. They're down markers are thrown they came prior to the snap. Play is blown dead with 14 04 to go in the first half and again we have referee Tom White ready to pronounce what happened illegal motion. I'll tell you this is a tough call. False start. Number 86 offense five yard penalty third down. Really the only thing Darnay Scott did was flex his knees just a little bit. So <laughs> that's pretty uh, that's pretty hard line by the uh, men in stripes today. This as you know Beasley is the third straight year that the Cincinnati Bengals have started one and three. Early as this season is, this is in a sense a must game if they're going to even contend for a playoff spot. One and four, you've got no shot. Thrown downfield, Pickens comes back at the ball. 
A beautifully executed play. Neil O'Donnell waiting to the last moment. He was struck hard, but he got the ball away to Carl Pickens for 14 yards and a first down. Boy, I'll tell you what, that's a whale time throw. It shows tremendous bravery by the quarterback. He knows he's going to get collapsed. And then Pickens just out muscling his younger counterpart. I mean, Dwayne Washington really has no idea how to control a guy with, with this type of talent. Now, you see, Dwayne is in super position. Dwayne's going to be a great football player. That's a good throw and a good catch. And it is a first down with a 14 yard gain. Dylan. Bang. Jason Gilden comes up. That's a slam tackle on the carrier for little or no gain as we go back to New York and to Jim Nance. Jim? All right, here's a game within uh, the division there for Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. Baltimore opened the game by sacking Steve McNair for a safety, but back comes McNair. He'll keep it, and he'll take it all the way for a touchdown. The Oilers went for two and missed, but they lead 6-2 now as we just start the second quarter, and let's go back there to Cincinnati. All right, Jim, Steve McNair is a terrific runner, but he doesn't like to. A lot of times he gives up big runs and stands and throws. A handoff to Corey Dillon and he is across the 45 as the yards now come grudgingly against this tough Steeler defense. Orpheus Roy having a good season makes the stop. Well something happened to number 71 Willie Anderson uh, in the blocking process that time. Uh, Willie Anderson was thrown back into the backfield by one of the Steeler defensive linemen right into the running back. The other defense, here's what they did against Seattle. Four QB sacks. They forced four turnovers, three fumbles, and an interception, and just won the game on a day their offense scored only 13 points. O'Donnell throws and comes in high. Shooting on the play of James Hunden getting his first start. Other markers down, and we have an offside being signaled against the Steelers. Boy, Neil O'Donnell. Coach is Coward. taking a beating. Coach Coward's <laughs> starting to heat up there, Beasley. Well, you know, I love it. You, you, Coach Coward will come about eight feet onto the football field if they make one or two more mistakes. Offsides, number 56, defense, lined up in the neutral zone. It's a five-yard penalty, third down. Now, so far, Neil O'Donnell is making great throws, courageous throws, but no quarterback can take this kind of pounding. We are early in this football game, and over and over again, the Steelers are just chipping away uh, at his body. We'll see what happens. Chipping away hard. Pitch back. Corey Dillon. And Dwayne Washington, that cornerback you were extolling as having a lot of ability, shows it there. It's he comes up and forces the run and makes the stop on a much heavier player Corey Dillon and the putter Johnson comes back out Lee Johnson back on the field he's a 14 year veteran Bill Cowher sets the emotional tone for his Steelers in his six previous seasons as head coach six playoff appearances Lee Johnson is one of the funniest men in the National Football League. I mean this guy is just just shy of a stand up comedian he is <laughs> absolutely a sick person. <laughs> it's not a laughing matter out there now though. Three nothing game Steelers. Jaheen Arnold comes up on the ball and fair catches at the 15 yard line. The NFL on CBS continues with the Steelers in the lead three to nothing. Anything it just doesn't feel secure enough. Don't like the tape job. You got you guys are very particular about it. they know exactly how it should feel. But uh, he's OK. Right now Cordell and the Steelers have the ball on offense and here comes Jerome Bettis behind Whitman his lead blocker and again the Bengals do a good job cutting down Jerome Bettis who gained 30 yards in six carries coming up soon Monday night everybody loves Raymond when Raymond embarrasses his wife in public see what she does to pay him back don't miss Monday night's number one comedy everybody loves Raymond right here on CBS. I like the big brother. The, the big brother is like this, you know, the big cop in the neighborhood. Is <laughs> like a modern day Frankenstein by uh, this. The super hit. Everybody loves Raymond as Jerome Bettis is caught from behind and knocked down to Keo Spikes. The 13th player picked in the last draft as coach Bruce Coslett calls him a guided missile. What a player he is out of Auburn University. 
Terry Bowden, the coach of Auburn, said he's one of the finest people we've ever had at Auburn, let alone one of our greatest football players. Well, watch him, watch him find the bus here because uh, Bettis is rolling. That, that's a lot of power, too. He told us that he bench presses. He's small of stature, but bench presses well over 400 pounds, and you saw it there as he pulled down the bus with one hand. Cordell calls his own number. On third down, he's ahead to the 30. And Cordell Stewart, who's been averaging less than three yards a run on a call play, breaks it up the middle on third down for 10 yards and a first down. See, now that's when the defense starts to get confused. That's when you start wondering, should we blitz? Should we blitz from the outside or the middle? Cordell might keep it and run straight up the middle as he does there. That third dimension that Cordell Stewart brings, I think, is so important. But for some reason, Cordell and and a lot of these guys who have great running talent choose to kind of want to be a stand in the pocket guy. It doesn't make any sense. Well, he came out of the pocket that time for 10 yards. Here's a handoff. And again, uh, angle defense with all that young speed at linebacker. Very tough to go wide on as the knockdown is made. Jerome Bettis is knocked down. Takeo Spikes has a 21 inch neck. He, used to, he had one shirt he told us when he was at Auburn because he just couldn't find it that fit him. He said even when he had the collar open it wasn't they wouldn't fit him. So when he got his bonus money first thing he did buy some shirts. Good one. First yep. thing he, <laughs> he paid he has to pay like a hundred bucks a shirt to have his shirts made. He says the tailor can't believe it when they put the tape around his neck. <laughs> Cardell Stewart on the run gets a block. Look at Slash Stewart on the fly. He could go the distance. The race is on. Artrell Hawkins gets him out of bounds. Charles Johnson with a tremendous block, and there is the slash Stewart smile as his old Colorado teammate comes back to greet him. A 57 yard run. What a play. The breakout game. That is Cardell Stewart. Now you can make you can call all the stand up, stay in the pocket, drop back. Fat, slow, big foot quarterback plays you want to call. This is a new day. This is a whole new thing that Look you're at looking this. at right here. Look at this man run. That's what Cardell Stewart does. It's what he does best. And it's what defenses are most afraid of. You big see those, play. Those two rookie linebackers in the Bengals, Spikes and Simmons, were catching up. That's how <laughs> yeah. fast they are. Yeah, that's how fast they are. But Cordell breaks a 57 yarder. Coach Coslett and his Bengals under the gun now. There's a timeout with the Steelers challenging. The Steelers leading in the second quarter, 3 0. Challenging now after the 57 yard run by Stewart. Dennis heading for the end zone. He's in. The bus was rolling, and I'll tell you, there are a lot of Pittsburgh Steelers fans here. You can tell by the towels. There are a lot of terrible towels. They here. were all over town yesterday. Busload after busload has rolled on down to watch their Steelers, all in yellow and black. It's almost like a game of Three Rivers. The stadiums look identical. The Steelers travel better than Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> And Jerome Bettis rolls on in from 13 yards out. And now Norm Johnson drives through the point after. And the Pittsburgh Steelers, who won five of six games here in the past under Bill Cower, have taken a 10 to nothing lead. For 49 yards, the last carry for 13 yards in the game's first touchdown as the Steelers have built a 10 to nothing lead with 8.28 to play in the first half. Norm Johnson ready to kick off to Tremaine Mack. There's the guy that ran one back 97 yards for a touchdown against the Baltimore Ravens. High spinning kick. Mack from the seventh. Bill Cowell is talking about one of the strong points of the Steelers this season has been special teams tackling, and that shows up again. As Neil O'Donnell and the, uh, the Bengals come on, this is a critical drive now, Beasley. They've got to put something up pretty soon to stay in this game. Well, the problem is they can't fall too far behind. Right now, they're down by 10. The NFL on CBS continues in a moment. Here's a Steeler fan who chose to spend his 50th birthday with the Steelers and 
Where would any Steeler fan rather be than right here, right now? In the words of the Mar great Marv Levy. But he's getting a nice birthday present so far. Steelers on top 10 nothing. O'Donnell with a quick out to Carl Pickens, looking to lose people, but there's a double team on him. And he is slammed hard to the turf by big linebacker Jason Gilden. The fifth year backer, 92 out of Oklahoma State, 255 pounds. None of these Steeler linebackers were number one draft choices, but man, they all play like they were. Now nah, there's something that Cowher sprinkles on them in the in the room and training camp when they sleep. It's like he breathes <laughs> these linebackers, man. I don't know. It's something about linebackers, though, in a Steeler uniform. You put a linebacker in a Steeler uniform, and they become nasty. Well, they, they've had so many great ones. The legacy of the Steeler linebackers. Here is Corey Dillon turning up, and boy, they are delivering knockout hits. Oh, this is good for the faint of heart. Here are some of the great linebackers in the legacy of Steeler football. Andy Russell, seven times a Pro Bowler. Jack Ham, eight times a Pro Bowler. Jack Lambert, Jack Lambert, Hall of Famer my, like him. He broke my nose. Jack he Lambert. broke a lot of noses, I'll including his own that. a few times. I was once a handsome man. <laughs> he got a clean shot of that. Note. <laughs> I mean, it goes on and on. Mike Merriweather, he was a four time pro yeah. bowler. Well, there's a good one right there. Kevin Green. Oh, Kirk. The list goes on. The beat goes on. The Steeler defense prevails. Here's a long ball. Pickens is open. He's got the ball. Neil O'Donnell bombs away, and Kyle Pickens is on the payoff end of a 47 yard play. And Coach Cower all of a sudden sees the game turn a bit. Well blocked, more than well blocked, perfectly blocked by the offensive line. The throw was measured and relaxed, and here it is at the end. That's a perfect show. Over throw over the outside shoulder where only Carl Pickens could get it, and Pick gets up talking a little trash. Now the handoff, and Dylan takes it up the middle. Working hard, he is inside the 25 yard line. And down close to the 21, where he stopped by nose tackle Joel Steed. Al Pickens with five catches today for 71 yards, 47 on that one big play. And he had some conversation for the cornerback who was trying to cover him, Jason Simmons. <laughs> There's Pick. You know, Pick very rarely talks to the media. He was very nice to come into our meeting. And uh, I see why he's brutally honest. When, when you ask him a question, he tells you. When, when, when he talks, he's got something to say. You better believe it. And if the ball's high in the air, Pickens is going to come down with it almost all the time. In Tennessee, he was a seven foot one inch high jumper. Well, he might jump ship at the end of this season unless he sees a major commitment by this Bengals organization to start to turn things around. So, uh, I mean, I thought the biggest thing that Pick told us was that. I've done everything this organization asked me to do. I'm on time. I work hard. I'm never in trouble. Never missed a workout never in the offseason. Never missed a workout never. in the offseason. That's huge. And this is a huge down. Third down for the Steeler for the Bengals. They need seven, and just before the ball is snapped, we might have had uh, Kevin Sargent, the left tackle, backing up to pass block early. Left tackle for the Bengals, number 77. Ball start. Number 77 offense, five yards, third down. Killer. That's a, oh, that's yeah. a killer. I mean, when you get it, when you get around that red area, everybody has to be mindful of not making a mistake. That'll drive a coach crazy. Absolutely crazy. So uh, third and seven play now it becomes third and twelve, and you can bet the linebackers are going to be coming at Neil O'Donnell. Now they come with a straight four man rush. O'Donnell steps in, fires, he's got a man, but he overshoots his man, James Hunden. A new acquisition of free agent who is, according to Coach Coslett, the fastest player on the Bengals team. Boy, he was open. He just blew by the defender. Oh, man. This, I tell you what, yeah, that was a beautiful opportunity. You talk about changing the dynamics of a football game. You know, I'm trying to figure out. See, Neil is looking like he's saying that you ran the wrong route or something here. But uh, boy, it looked like a clean route, wide open, and an overthrow to me. Now, Pelfrey steps into the ball and spins up a long field goal attempt, and he does get it through. So, after the big play, O'Donnell to Pickens. The Bengals do get points a 44 yard field goal by Doug Pelfrey. Cincinnati on the board. 
trailing the Steelers 10 to 3. Coming up tomorrow night, doctors face life and death every day, but what happens when the life you hold in your hand is your own mother's? Don't miss the new hit drama, L.A. Doctors, Monday on CBS. Sunday on CBS, it's the NFL, and it's the Pittsburgh Steelers, who've uh, been beaten 15 times here in uh, Cincinnati. They've won 12, and they've lost 15, but they're... Uh, Five and one under Bill Cower here in Cincinnati. Coming up at halftime, the NASDAQ halftime report with Jim Nance, Marcus Allen, Brett Jones, and George Seifert. Bill Cower trimmed down, a former special team standout. Players all talk about the emotion he generates, how it's so legit and it fires up the whole team. I tell you, Bill scared me a little bit when he came in our meeting yesterday. He came in there looking like a Hollywood. He uh, did. Movie actor. He looked very good. He looked very dapper. It made me nervous because you know I'm used to the spitting brimstone and <laughs> you know steel-toed boot guy. I like. He, yeah, he came he in there with a little something, with a little something, something. A little styling. <laughs> Lee Johnson ready to kick off now for the Bengals. Now we're under a new contract. One of the highest-paid coaches in the NFL, and with good reason. He's delivered the goods. Here is a sidewinder kick hit downfield. Jaheen Arnold for the Steelers. He can run fast. And Arnold, who the Steelers have been waiting for to come back after fracturing a collarbone in August in a preseason game, uh, he's back now with all his speed and knocked out of bounds by safety Greg Myers of the Bengals. So with four minutes and 30 seconds to go in the first half, Cordell and the Steeler offense comes out to run. Get some clock going, and uh, LeVon Kirkland said he loved to see Jerome Bettis run because when Jerome is running, the defense is resting. This time it's Cordell's going to throw. Open man. John Whitman the fullback who normally does nothing else but block but John was unattended and he's open for a 16 yard gain another big fullback from Penn State. Well Cordell Stewart impressive that time he surveyed almost the entire field see he looks right early comes to the left side and then comes back to the right side Now that's a lot of reading for a second year quarterback he gets it done. They don't throw to Whitman often but he appreciates it when they do I'm sure he does 16 yard gain. Dennis banging into people. Dennis was showing me yesterday, Beasley, what he does. I say, how do you take on these tacklers? He said, well, you've got to deliver a hit. He does it by lowering his shoulder and by ripping up with his arm and his knee. Yeah, so you're looking at me head on. He said, they're going to take a brutal hit from me, and they do. No, you don't want to be involved in that. And after a while, you start to tiptoe into a guy like that. You know, back in my era, it was Earl Campbell that would wear you down like that. <laughs> and th today's Earl Campbell is Jerome Bettis. He gives him the knee shot. Big rush on Cordell Stewart forces that Aaron pass to Charles Johnson. Cordell Stewart took one of those splat shots that time. <laughs> Sam Shade <laughs> coming on a blitz, number 35 for the Bengals. Yeah, see, I can laugh up here, but you know, a splat shot, you don't want to, you don't want to take a splat shot. They, he was flat flat on the field. Yeah, well, a splat shot is when you don't have time to gather yourself and, you know, hit and roll. You just kind of splat <laughs> to the turf. Here's a third down. Steelers need nine. Stewart is six for ten, throwing the ball. Down the field, Courtney Hawkins dives at the ball, and he makes the play. Oh, man, these boys are playing football. A phenomenal play by Courtney Hawkins. 27 yards on third and nine. And a Steeler is shaken up. That's five mile two mile follow. He's up though. Look at that catch. Oh, the fingertip control. That was a phenomenal catch by Courtney Hawkins. Talk about becoming a go-to guy. You start doing stuff like that, and you you become more than a go-to guy. Great uh, second look. Our producer today for CBS Sports is Al Szymanski, director J.D. Hansen, executive producer Terry Ewart. We're coming to you from Synergy Field, Cincinnati, Ohio.
The Pittsburgh Steelers and the Bengals arch rivals. Don Cricky with Beasley Reese. Steelers went out to a 10 nothing lead. Bengals drove down. Penalty set them back. They got a long field goal from Pelfrey. And they're on the board trailing by seven. The rookie fullback Chris Fua Matumala. Go ahead Beasley take no, it away. I better take this one. Okay. <laughs> you got it buddy. That's Chris Fa Matu Mafala. Thank you. I practiced that for a week. And uh, Jerome Bettis was high in his praise for this guy. He said he's going to be a terrific player. Well, we got to get a nickname for. First of all, we got to get him healthy enough. We, Fu, I think, might do it. Okay, Fu. We, we want him to get up and be okay, but. But when you're 5'11", 255, you want to give him a name that he's happy with. You have to discuss it with him. Yeah. <laughs> it's up for negotiation. All right. Good to see uh, Chris Fu up and moving. Fuamatu Mahafala. Close. And there is Jerome Bettis who rolled a 299 bowling game in the offseason in the Johnny Petraglia tournament in New Jersey this summer. Final frame that darn eight pin. He doesn't know how it stood up, but it was. He said it was the best position. He had a ball all day. He's what I what I like about it is he did it in tournament play. Yeah, so yeah. we know it's legit. This is tournament play two Sunday afternoon at one. Jerome Bettis is in his office and banging away at the Bengal defense. The Keo spikes knocks him down. And Dennis is a bit slow getting up. Now they're delivering some shots out there today. It's warfare. That's a hard man to hurt. You got to hit him. You got to catch him really off guard to hurt Jerome Bettis because he is used to banging, banging, banging. So on consecutive plays, the Steelers' two big fullbacks go off. We'll check out Jerome Bettis when we come back. Still down on the field. He started to get up and they kept him down. He was shaken up on a hard tackle. So far in this game, he's rushed 11 times for 55, yard, 55 yards, including that 13 yard touchdown run. And now Bill Cower comes out to check on his I big tell fullback. You, it's, it's not good when the coaches start walking out there. Uh, it looks like they are checking Jerome's legs, but look, he's up and walking. Oh boy that's a big break for the Steelers. You can't stop the bus you can slow him down a bit. He's explaining it sorry coach. So yeah he hit the wrong gear. They you got know, the right. <laughs> he probably geared down at the wrong time. Look at look at the <laughs> smile. You see the smile on Cowher's face. He's a fun guy. Take a look at his numbers so far he's kind of been up and down you know he goes 41 yards against Baltimore then just light Chicago up goes 48 yards against Miami then lights up Seattle so. Uh, if, if the trend continues he should have a average day today but he's already putting on quite a show. The bus momentarily stopped. He'll be back. Second down and six. Richard Huntley runs and puts the ball on the field and fumbles. So while it's good to see Bettis is all right it's not good for the Steelers that he wasn't there to carry because second year back Richard Huntley who's averaging almost eight yards a carry turns the ball over on a fumble. Greg Myers number 31 is on it. Now this is the eighth turnover of the season for the Steelers. They had four in the last game versus the Seahawks so that is not a very good trend from a very good football. It's not when you get your big shot by Richard Huntley. This is not what you want to do with it. Now that was Sam Shade Beasley who put that hard hit on Myers got the fumble recovery but that's all Sam Shade. Well you know how I feel about Sam Shade he's got the best name in the defensive backfield. Yes he does. So, private detective like a private detective. Corey Dillon runs as we're coming down now to the two minute warning. Bengals looking to get some operating room as they get the ball out to their 15 yard line the tackle by Joel Steed. Fumbles for the Steelers on his first carry and the drive is stopped. Don Cricky with Beasley Reese a game of some big plays and had a critical fumble because it looked like the Steelers were going in to take a 17 nothing lead. Well they were rolling and the bus got stopped just a little bit. They give a uh, young Chris Huntley his first opportunity and uh, he does not distinguish himself. I'm sure he hopes to get another opportunity. Might be a while coming. <laughs> O'Donnell from the shotgun here comes the rush and he's almost picked off. That was to Keo Spikes number 51 or Carlos Emmons number 51 coming in to 
make the slap at the ball and almost ended up in Carlos Emmons hands. This guy's an 11th round draft choice who's played terrific football. The Nasdaq halftime report coming up. Jim Nansen company with scores and highlights in a preview of today's second game you'll see on many of these CBS stations. Denver at Seattle. Major battle in the AFC West. We got a war going on in the AFC Central here. Here is O'Donnell airing it out and he's got Pickens. Beautifully executed out to the 32 yard line and they quickly stop the clock as Pickens dances out of bounds. Well they got the mismatch that they wanted that time that was a safety Darren Perry number 39 covering on the play and safeties don't have a, a real big opportunity when it comes to covering a receiver like Carl Pickens that's a 16 yard gain. Bill Cower checks it out. The guy who's led his Steelers to Super Bowl 30 working against his Pittsburgh team. O'Donnell in trouble. Level from behind. Coming hard was Orpheus Roy, number 71. Neil O'Donnell is a real tough guy. I'm telling you, he got off the ground calling the next play. <laughs> right, they're, going, they're going in the no huddle, guys. Calling the next play off the ground. Live action. He goes right back at Pickens. Another completion. That one's good for 11. And now we have a timeout signaled for with a minute and 26 seconds left to play in the first half. O'Donnell wanted to be sure everybody's on the same page. As he comes over to talk to Bruce Coslett. Coslett and, and his Bengals finished six and two last year in the second half of the season. It's the bad starts that hurts this Cincinnati team. This is good coverage and it's a good route. Carl Pickens pushes uh, Dwayne Washington until Dwayne Washington opens to run deep with him. He would have run that pattern as deep as he had to run it until Dwayne opened his feet. When Dwayne opened his feet, he stopped, came back to the quarterback. That's a good throw, good blocking by the line. And a super pattern. That's like a clinic for you young wide receivers out there. Opening his feet now. That's defensive back talk. That's open. Yes, yeah, defensive. You know, when you come out of your backfield and open to turn and run, it takes you out of position to have a nice recovery technique. Recovery technique is going from reverse to forward to come up and make the play. So just a good job by both athletes. Carl Pick is just a pro bowl. Third down and a long one. Murray Dillon takes it ahead and he takes on tacklers. He doesn't back off. He's like the bus. Murray Dillon, the guy who rushed for 246 yards in one game last season against Tennessee as a rookie. Yeah, they won't forget him. I mean, he won't be visiting Graceland. That was the uh, record that stood for 40 years set by Jim Brown. <laughs> you, oh. didn't, you didn't catch that one. Oh, the Graceland. Yeah. He won't be visiting Graceland. <laughs> He may have to pay double for a ticket. And they're talking about calling the Tennessee uh, Oilers. We're going to change the name next season. They have a whole lot of names on the list, among them the Tennessee Kings after Elvis. Yeah, that, that going to be nice. the Commodores. Okay, the Commodores. They got the Vipers. They got everything right. out there. Neil O'Donnell has not turned the ball over. In fact, the Bengals, despite their one and three record, have only one turnover this season. The good football teams win the turnover ratio. That's why. Uh, their losses have been close losses for the most part. They have been very much in football games. Neil O'Donnell will keep you in a football game by himself. He's 8 for 12, throwing for 105 yards. Kept ball, but it's picked up by Eric Bamini. He gets down inside the 45 yard line where this Jason Gilden can really run. Now, now watch Neil O'Donnell here. He is orchestrating this thing. That's what he brings to the table. He's called the play already, and there they go. Blitz, long ball. Man is there. Oh, what a play! Darnay Scott, absolutely magnificent. A phenomenal play. Hands to his head. Bill Cowher says he can't believe it. All out blitz again. O'Donnell hung in and hung in. He was going to get leveled. Let's her fly, and it's a perfect strike. Well, you're not going to believe this. The pattern that uh, Darnay Scott runs is, is, is a sick pattern. He comes in, he leans, he breaks out, and O'Donnell throws it high, straight up in the air over the outside shoulder. That 
was beautiful. Boy, that was beautiful. Now they're going for two. Uh, intercepted in the end zone. Officially, it was a 44-yard touchdown play. You know what? Uh, you, I talked about wide receiver clinics from um, from Carl uh, from uh, Carl Pickens. Look at Darnay Scott, number 86. Look at him lean, and then on the bounce outside, he totally loses the defensive back. He leans in until the defensive back turns his head. When he sees the DB turn his head, he breaks out, and there's the ball waiting on him like a balloon coming down out of the sky. And then a gamble they fake kicking the extra point throw the ball but it's picked off snap was fumbled also so they probably had no other way to go. And let me tell you something that was a difficult catch that you know he made that catch look easy but it's the old over the shoulder drill you run full speed out here you know on television thousands of people watching and have to bend underneath a ball like that it's a difficult catch that Darnay Scott made. So Darnay Scott out of San Diego State makes the big play. There have been many in this first half. Neil O'Donnell throwing the ball extremely well against his former mates from the Steelers. But the errant extra point. And the Steelers still hold to a one-point lead, 10 to 9, now with 52 seconds left to play. And who knows? Cordell Stewart, a guy that can make it happen fast, could get the Steelers in scoring position. Well. They have their returner back. The man they've been waiting on. And there he is right there. Jaheen Arnold. So if he can put him in good field position, there's no telling what can happen before the half. Downfield, here comes Jaheen Arnold. And Jaheen gets out of bounds. He might be a little bit gun shy coming back from that fractured collarbone. He wasn't looking to take anybody on there. No, no, no. He's not. He's, he just wants to get through this one, his first game back. Also, a knocker is down, so the play comes back. A legal block on the kick return will set the Steelers back. I'll tell you, a lot of people don't realize that the significance. I mean, you're talking about turning this as we listen to the officials. Holding number 33 during the return, half the distance to the goal, first down. So instead of the Steelers working with a 80 yard football field now they have a 91 yard football field to travel in 52 seconds or 47 seconds. So those penalties and those mistakes I mean that's where the game is won and lost turnovers penalties and mistakes. Well that's what uh, Bill Cowher said yesterday he said uh, and the both coaches Coslett said it's going to be turnovers last year the Steelers beat the Bengals twice because they have a seven nothing advantage in turnovers. Well I'll give you a six step. Pittsburgh on the Cowher 45 and five when they win the turnover battle. That is a telling step. The one turnover in today's game was by the Steelers. When uh, Jerome Bettis went out briefly after getting shaken up on a carry. Second year back Richard Huntley came in and uh, off the ball right up. When yeah. Ten seconds left to play in the first half, and the Steelers are apparently going to take their one-point winnings to the locker room. Is not want to jeopardize a turnover. Ten to nine is the score. Steelers coming in with a three and one record, despite having an offense that's rated 28th in the NFL. Although it will move up after today's performance. Cordell Stewart with some big plays. Neil Donald with even more. Now the Steelers and the Bengals head to the locker room halftime at Synergy Field Cincinnati where the Steelers lead the Bengals 10 to 9. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after this message and a word from your local station. We're out. A spectacular touchdown pass at the at near the end of the first half puts the Bengals right back in the game. The Steelers lead the Bengals at halftime 10 to 9. Don Crickey with Beasley Reese and Neil O'Donnell had awaited this game his first against his old mates in the Steelers. He delivered some big plays but 
So did Jerome Bettis of the Steelers as he runs here for 13 yards. That was the block by number 73, Justin uh, Jason Strelznik coming around with a great block on that play. And here late in the second quarter is the long ball to Darnay Scott. Darnay Scott got the defensive back to turn his back when he got him in the blind spot. He came back out. It's a great throw and a super batter. And then a fumbled snap on the extra point attempt. And they ended up trying to hurl it into the end zone. Oh, these are tough moments as Pelfrey, the kicker, not a quarterback. As we see, he throws it right to a Pittsburgh Steeler. So the Bengals fail to convert, but they do get right back in the game and trail a 10 to 9. Both these teams looking to get turnovers. There's been a big one in the game for the Steelers. They were down close, looking to go up 17 to 3 at one point. Bettis went out with a minor injury, just out for a play. Then all of a sudden, Huntley got his first carry and coughed it up. So that helped keep the Bengals in the game, a game that the uh, Cincinnati Bengals feel they really have to win. A one and four start would all but end uh, their playoff hopes uh, five games into the season. Well, I just want Steeler and Bengal fans to kind of put this in the memory bank. That little bad snap that Lee Johnson couldn't yeah. handle, making this a one point game, is the biggest play of this football game thus far. And as far as the hitting goes, it has been warfare. There have been rocket hits out there. You know, we talked to jo Jerome Bettis about that, about what he does when he takes those licks. He says normally on a Tuesday, he just soaks and stretches, soaks and stretches to get the beating out of his body. Now he rides a uh, life cycle and a treadmill on Monday, the day after the game. He feels like when he gets that blood circulating, it helps him to recover quickly uh, from these brutal games. And this is certainly one of them. It has been as hard hitting as they get. Jaheen Arnold runs the ball back for the Steelers. A reverse. And they break it across the 30 yard line, but there is a penalty marker down. Fred McAfee, 25, coming across, taking the handoff from Jaheen Arnold. So the Steelers go to their special teams, bag of tricks, but it blows up. Looks like it's against Pittsburgh. Yeah, you know, there's bad decisions by these players. Um, almost every time you see a great run today, they walk it back because these guys don't have the discipline to pull off. Holding number 29 during the return, 10 yard penalty, first down. So they got people blocking the wrong way. And it will now be first down and 10 as the ball is spotted back inside the 20 yard line at the 19. That was Lance Brown with the hold, and uh, you know you got to know if you you can't get the guy in the front, don't block him in the back. And uh, Richard Huntley runs the ball. So Huntley who fumbled uh, gets another carry. He came in though with 86 yards, a 7.8 per carry average. So apparently maybe the bus is uh, still a little banged up easily. Well, they're probably being very careful right now. Richard Huntley, you see his numbers. 225 pounder, 25 years old. Winston Salem State. They are very proud of him at that small spot. Second down and four. Huntley again looks for blockers. A very different running style than the bus to whom Bettis, who runs his own interference, blasting holes open when there aren't any. Huntley's looking for some place to pick an opening, and there wasn't any. He goes down for no gain. Third and four. The Steelers and the Bengals. There's the bus to whom Bettis. I don't know if he's got the hat on. He's uh, if he's going to be back or not. Banged up earlier, but he was back in the game after he was shaken up. Cornell Stewart on the run. A first down and more as he's across the 35-yard line out to the 36. Former teammate Myron Bell tackles him. Cornell Stewart on a second called run of the day breaks it for a first down again. Well, every time they give these uh, zone blitzes where they blitz from the outside, Cardell Stewart is taking it right up the middle. That is very discouraging. Look at the middle of the football field. See how it opens up because they're blitzing from the outside on that zone blitz on the play. Makes you scared to blitz when a quarterback runs. He's got the ball. It's a loaded gun with a trigger cock. End around. 
Courtney Hawkins turning up and he's knocked out of bounds at midfield. That was beautiful. And these many Steeler fans kick in. It was beautiful. It's almost like a game, as we mentioned, at Three Rivers when the Steelers have a big play. Their reaction so strong. That was a 14 yard gain. See, this is well conceived play that's good blocking from the fullback position, John Whitman. Good blocking from the wide receiver position, 81, Charlie. Uh, Charlie Johnson with a nice block there. Charlie's only about 200 pounds. But boy, he puts a guy and pushes him about five yards out of the way. He's had nice blocks a lot of times today, Charlie Johnson. And off play fake. Stewart has the ball. He's on the run. Catch him if you can. They finally get him inside the 30-yard line, a 22-yard game. So the Steelers have been waiting for the breakout game from Cordell Stewart. And on this Sunday afternoon in Cincinnati, they're getting it. Well, now, you know, I'm going to make my player happy. I'm going to give him the freedom to do these things. Now, what's he, what he wants is the play action fake. He wants to get the man deep down the middle when he's covered. Now, watch him set up the block here. See him go inside. He knows he's going back out there. He just set up the block by the uh, fullback to help him out to get a little farther downfield. That's super run. Cordell Stewart has ignited the Steelers with his big plays. Running and throwing the ball as they now challenge to extend their lead, a one point lead at the moment with 11.30 to play in the third quarter. And here's Tom White, our referee. Play game, offense, five yard penalty, first down. Cordell Stewart, Beasley, uh, has run it six times for a rather handsome amount. Yeah, this guy is one yard away from a 100 yard rushing day. And when you get that out of your quarterback, you know, we, when we were talking to Cardell, he said he called himself the fifth option. I didn't like it when he said it. He needs to be about the third option. There should be a primary receiver, secondary receiver, and then run, Cardell, run. He's been doing that. Right up the middle, Richard Huntley. Both arms on the ball. He's not about to give it up again, and he does get yardage and also takes out the umpire. 13 yard gain up the middle. Richard Huntley's got a little groove going here. This guy's got a, a you know, we're, we're seeing him for the first time. He's, uh, you know, he's, like you said, he's averaged 7.1, some astounding number. But the first time in this game, because uh, the bus is a little banged up. And boy, he runs nice, nice balance, nice interior run. So quick into the gap. Richard Huntley getting his shot after an earlier disappointment when he fumbled the ball. Breaks it straight ahead for 11 yards and a first and goal for the Steelers at the nine yard line. Richard Huntley's trying to be discovered. This guy's like America. We're checking to see what's uh, actually wrong with Jerome Bettis. He was shaken up, was on the ground for a while after a carry in the second quarter. We're told it's a twisted left knee. Huntley again, and he goes in, standing up. So some tremendous blocking from the offensive front. Blast open the Bengal defense. Dermotti Dawson just cleaning people out across from him. Strelzik at left tackle, Fanick at left guard, Brendan Stye at right guard, Jermaine Stevens at right tackle, a revamped offensive line because of some injuries. Will Wolford is out. But it's working like a Swiss watch as they just blast open, Nessie. Bill Cowher saying, You did it, my friend. Well, notice he kept his helmet on because Bill Cowher will kiss you in a minute. <laughs> You keep your helmet on when you go to the sideline after doing something good with Cal. Extra point by Norm Johnson is up and good. And so it is a 17 to 9 lead for the Steelers. Eight play drive, 81 yards, no passes in it. Pushing on the sidelines. Jerome Bennett with a twisted knee out, not seriously hurt. Richard Huntley comes in in his stead, but Bennett scored in a 13 yard run. And Huntley just took it in from nine yards out. Here is the Steeler kickoff. If these Steelers come down to cover kicks, this Fred McAfee's like he shot out of a gun. Oh man, go down, kids, when you get killed. <laughs> <laughs>
I, I was watching Fred McAfee. You you can't come down a field harder or faster than no. Fred McAfee no. to cover a kick. No. McAfee will break a wedge in a minute. The NFL on CBS continues in a moment. Well, we often wonder what Santa did in the offseason before he makes his ride, and we find out he's a Steeler fan. No, that man's a fraud. <laughs> Santa's a Giants fan. I don't know. <laughs> he's here today, and that looks like a lot of Steeler wear he's got on. Neil O'Donnell, the former Steeler, throws a strike to Kyle Pickens. He's only sensational. Kyle Pickens all the way out to the 45 yard line a gain of 23 yards on the play. Neil O'Donnell has done his part. Carl Pickens has made his contribution. I mean these guys are playing. This is a great football game period. We're getting big plays both Tremendous. sides of the ball. Look at this good blocking. They move the pocket fake everybody out with a little run play action and then look at this guy dance. See that's not giving up. You know your average player goes down about five six yards. He's having a good day. Eight carries, eight receptions for 120 yards for Kyle Pickens. Now the ball is given to Corey Dillon. Hey, this Corey Dillon just hammers away and he keeps getting hammered while he's doing it. Finally, Keevan Henry is the man who gets him down, but he gets across the field. One thing you'll notice about uh, Corey Dillon, he's like a tree faller. I mean, when you tackle him, he still he manages to fall forward every time. I mean, I know that's an old description of a good running back. He always manages to fall forward, but Corey Dillon certainly gets it done. That was the AFC Rookie of the Year last year. And off to Dillon. Ten yards and a first down. Lane Washington finally gets him out of bounds. And it's a first down for the Bengals. He's special. He's a big special man. Well, he is all of that. See, watch this. This is where they kind of slap. You know, he kind of slides and in inside the defense thinks he's going to turn it up, and then he bounces. And he's got the speed to gain significant yardage on the outside. This time they go to Eric the Enemy at 5'7", 205. He's a hard guy to get a clean look at. Shoot low, they're riding Shetland ponies when <laughs> Eric the enemy's got the ball. Well, he's a he's a great attitude guy. Hey, you know, you there, you're looking at the, the Steeler defense there, and you saw uh, Keevan Henry. Let me tell you something about this guy. This guy, the enemy, or Keevan Henry. You're losing your mic there, Beasley, as we now go to Neil O'Donnell with a throw downfield. Darnay Scott, you'll remember the last one that he caught, went for 44 yards and a touchdown just before halftime. But the Bengals with a very good drive, ignited by the passing of Neil O'Donnell, the man who was drafted in the third round out of Maryland by the Steelers back in 1990. The 31 yard line. It is a third down and five. Blitz comes. They throw to the hot zone. It's to Pickens, and he's quickly taken right down. So, zone coverage behind the blitz allows Pickens nowhere to go. And that will bring up the, the kicking team will come out now as uh, Doug Pelfrey ready to try a field goal. He's hit one today. Field goes in, Tommy. Field goes in. He can hit it. It would make it a five point game. Five minutes and 57 seconds left to play in the third quarter. The hold by Lee Johnson's at the 38 yard line. So it's a long one, but Pelfrey can boom him long. 48 yarder. Hits the ball well, spins it downfield. Nicely done by the Kentuckian Doug Pelfrey. He hits a 48 yarder. And cuts the Steelers lead to 17 to 12 with 5.39 to go in the third quarter. Now, the 48 yard field goal by Doug Pelfrey of the Bengals cuts the Steelers lead now to 17 to 12. Lee Johnson ready to kick off. Dusting wins today and a bright sunny day in the Southern Ohio. 
Stadium sold out. It always is when the Pittsburgh Steelers come to town to play their AFC Central arch rivals, the Bengals. Steelers have been dominant in the series in the recent years. Since 91, Pittsburgh is 12 and 2 against the Bengals. Johnson kicks the ball downfield, and here comes the super fast Jaheen Arnold. That when you go, way, that ain't the way Beasley Reese ran back kickoff. Now, when you go back there, you're naked. You're like a naked man. You leave your blocking. You're you're on your own. <laughs> Offside, though, and this is uh, something the special teamers absolutely hate because they got to go back and make that long run already. The kickoff team was offside. So that 60-yard run downfield. Now we'll do that again, boys. Uh, uh, <laughs> See what kind of shape you're in. <laughs> While we have a moment, we remind you. First, we'll hear from uh, referee Tom White. With 5:28 to go. In Off the sides, number 57, the kicking team, five-yard penalty, re-kick. Next Saturday in the SEC, Auburn's Arston Bailey will look for running room against Florida's attack defense, and in the Big East. Donovan McNabb ignites the Orange Men in a Big East pass with Mike Cloud and the BC Eagles. NASDAQ College Football next Saturday here on CBS. Takeo Spikes is from Auburn. He's in this game. He'll probably try to get some time on Saturday to check that out. So now they bring the ball back and they'll kick off from the 25 yard line. Talking to uh, Joe Brown from the NFL. It's a constant move in the league uh, competition committee to bring the you know, they keep, one time they kicked off in the 40 yard line. Now it's all the way back to the 30 this time because of the penalty of the 25. But the league uh, NFL feels and rightly so that there's no more exciting play in football than a kickoff return. And these kickers are so good you got to keep moving them back so they can't kick it out of the end zone. Lee Johnson now will see this one run back. He kicked the beauty inside the five. And here comes Jaheen Arnold again. He gets out to the 29 yard line. Well, you say that there's nothing more exciting than a kickoff. There's also nothing more dangerous. I mean, you're talking about 11 guys running full speed at 11 guys with like a 20, 30, 40 yard separation. Almost beyond full speed. Yeah. We, we do not have well men coming down to some of these <laughs> Wild men coming down. Full speed collisions. Cordell Stewart throws near side, makes a connection to Courtney Hawkins, and he is uh, knocked down at the 37 or 8 yard line by cornerback Ashley Ambrose. They haven't gone at Ambrose much, and with good reason. He's a Pro Bowl player. Now, he's a great player, and uh, that throw has to be well timed. It's the most difficult throw in football from the middle of the field to the sideline. Simple geometry. Cordell Stewart continues to build numbers waiting for the breakout game as backup quarterback Mike Tomczak told him just be Cordell Stewart go out and play be an athlete make things happen he's done that and they're just short of the first down it's interesting the defensive game plans Beasley are most teams now are the game plan is to keep Cordell Stewart in the pocket not try to flush him out like you would other quarterbacks because he kills you when he's out of the pocket there's only a few believe me defensive coordinators Love it when these coaches have a Cardell Stewart and try to change him into a, a drop back passer or when the player himself. I mean, sometimes these running quarterbacks think they're not a real quarterback if they don't stay in the pocket. Well, it's ridiculous. As a defensive player, let me tell you something, it's the number one thing that scared me to death. He's the guy who's, who's not accounted for, the quarterback. And it's so much harder to play now than it ever was because you see blitzes. On virtually every play, everybody in the league is blitzing all the time. There's so much less reaction time for a quarterback. And off to Huntley, and the Bengal defenders are hunting him as they knock him down for a little gain. He gets to the 40-yard line, but he does get enough for the first down. He needs just about a half yard. He gets that. Clyde Simmons and Leonard Wilson were the tacklers. Well, the uh, linebackers for Cincinnati have a better shot 
against Huntley than they did against Bettis. Bettis was 250, some 25 pounds larger than the linebackers. Well, Huntley is 225, about the same size as the smallest linebackers of Cincinnati. Again, the Steelers keep the ball on the ground, running clock here in the third quarter, holding to a five point lead. 17 to 12, the Steelers led at halftime 10 to 9. Hartley's like a minivan. Yeah, he's the minivan and uh, the minibus. <laughs> <laughs> he's like Jerome a minivan. Bettis is an 18 wheeler. <laughs> now they send two wideouts wide right. Will Blackwell's on the field for Pittsburgh. Here's a safety blitz. And they pick up the run with the blitz on second down and four. Gain of a couple of yards out to the 48 yard line. Michael Bankston coming hard. So was the nose tackle for the Bengals, Kimo Van Olhofen. I tell you what's fun to watch, and that's the offensive line of the Steelers. They will pull the center, DeMonte Dawson. They cross block, they trap block. And it's always been that way. It's always been a very complicated blocking scheme. You have to have super athletes to do it. And Huntley on third and short takes it across midfield and gets down to the 49 yard line. Tackle by Wilson and Artrell Hawkins. So the Steelers drive on. Two eighteen to go in the third quarter. We welcome those of you who've been watching the Patriots blowing out the Kansas City Chiefs. This is Don Cricky with Beasley Reese. We've got a good one going in Cincinnati. As the Bengals coming with a blitz defense all day long, Seth Cordell Stewart. The Steelers lead this game as you see, 17 to 12, with 2:02 to play in the third quarter. Clyde Simmons, the veteran, former Eagle and Cardinal, is coming hard in that play. Well, there have been some great plays and some great runs by Cardell Stewart. For those of you joining us now, he was about to come out of the pocket that time, but luckily for Cincinnati, they were able to grab a foot. Just to hold him down. It's been a classic Cordell Stewart day. They were waiting for the breakout game from Cordell Stewart. He's been slumping a bit this season, but he's had it today. He's played spectacular football as he dives ahead on a broken play. He broke a 57 yard run to Cordell Stewart in the first half on a broken play. He's thrown for over 100 yards today. He's rushed for over 100 yards. We talked to him yesterday and he said uh, everybody's been talking to him telling him you don't have to have the perfect game every week. He came in with two touchdown throws and six interceptions. Yes on Cordell Stewart like numbers. But today he's been back up to full speed and the three and one Steelers have taken the lead 17 12. The throw downfield is completed at a 42 yard line. Charles Johnson comes down with the ball. Johnson with a 10 yard reception. And Johnson and Stewart, who combined on so many big throws when they were Colorado Buffaloes together on the 57 yard run, Charles Johnson had the key block. Charles Johnson has been really blocking great right now. The Pittsburgh Steelers are bringing in their big guys, their heavy crew. So you saw that the Bengals countered by bringing in their big guys, the heavy group. Fourth and about one and a half. One of these heavy groups is going to have to give way. Jerome Bettis was shaken up in the second quarter, has not played in the second half. Here's his backup, Huntley. And on fourth down, it looks like the Bengals got him. They stopped him short of the first down. And Cincinnati's defense ranked 29th in the NFL coming into this game stands tall and slams the door and takes over the ball. Been a tremendous game. Tremendous. We've had a little bit of everything. And this is just this is a good attack from the backside by Sam Shade to grab the runner's legs before he really got going. Good blitz. 
And that's going to do it for three quarters of play as the clock runs out. An underdog on their home field. Battling back, stopping the Steelers on a fourth down try and taking over the ball. And here's the ex-Steeler Neil O'Donnell throwing a strike. His receiver Kyle Pickens with his ninth catch of the day. The NFL on CBS will continue in a moment. Back at Cincinnati under Bill Cower, if you're behind his Steelers after three quarters of play start up the bus you can forget about it because they are 48 2 they just don't you know their team is built to, to hold the lead it's a running team and aggressive defense Neil O'Donnell on second down and two the man who quarterback the Steelers in their last Super Bowl Super Bowl 30 hands off Corey Dillon the second year back from Washington has been an absolute runaway truck in this game just knocking down would be tacklers that was a 16 yard gain for last year's rookie of the year. Well Corey Dillon gets some excellent blocking here. You see lineman pulling on the outside he hits a hole and he hits it hard this guy's like look how he runs over people. I mean he like Jerome Bettis attacks the tackler. 225 but he plays a lot larger. Oh he does he really he just knocks people out with his running. 250 and 60 pound linebackers are knocked back by Dillon. And uh, this time it's Eric the enemy. Another Colorado player in this game. The field is full of them. Standouts as the handoff takes the ball down to the 30 yard line of Pittsburgh. A touchdown here would put the underdog Bengals in the lead. They're down by five with 14 minutes to play in the game. That cut by Eric Bieniemy. It was the same play that Corey Dillon had the nice run on, but Eric Bieniemy cut completely behind the runners and surprised the Steeler defense. On second and three, O'Donnell going to the end zone. Darnay Scott is there. Touchdown, Cincinnati. The Bengals take the lead. Doesn't beat just anybody, he beats Cornell Lake. Cornell Lake turns his back from the beginning. That's poor technique by a pro bowler. And he put himself in trouble from the very beginning. It's a good throw, almost a little late, but a good throw by Neil O'Donnell. Up by one, they're going for two. Or Donald Coxon throws and nobody's open, so he throws it away. And Brian Milne, one of his backs, was standing wide open in the corner of the end zone. He never saw him. But the Bengals on Neil O'Donnell's second touchdown pass of the day take the lead. You're watching the NFL on Cincinnati since Bill Cowher took over as Steelers coach in 92. The Steelers are 12 and 2 against the Bengals. 5 and 1 here at Cincinnati. But on this day the underdog Bengals have come back to take the lead in a game that they feel they have to win to stay in the race. For the third straight year Cincinnati's off to a 1 and 3 start. And they can't afford to go one and four and have any playoff hopes. Lee Johnson kicks off. Jaheen Arnold is counseled. Don't bring it out. On the touchback, it'll be the Steelers' ball at their 20 when we come back. Cincinnati sold out. It always is. And the Steelers come to town and they come with back by busload after busload of Pittsburgh Steelers fans. When the Steelers have a big play and they've had many, it's almost as loud here at Synergy Field as it is when the Bengals have a big play and they've had many. The young linebackers for the Cincinnati Bengals 55 is Reiner to Wilson. Pitch back. Richard Huntley turning it up, turning it out. He's slammed down and a penalty marker is also fired in from behind the play by the referee Tom White. Now he throws another. He's got two guns loaded out there. Holding on the offense, the Steelers. Both these teams coming off the bye week. Cincinnati is two and seven Holding after bye weeks. Number 38. Ten yard penalty, first down. 
John Whitman 38 the blocking back is called for a hole so the Steelers their lead gone are back deep in their own end. Well this is a quick play it's just a toss sweep and then at the very front the fullback the blocking back grabs on. First down and 20 for Cordell Stewart and the Steelers. Huntley. Those super fast young linebackers, Brian Simmons, a first round draft choice, a rookie out of North Carolina, makes that stop. The silent assassin, they call him. That's his hit and do the talking. And then next to him is Takeo Spikes from Auburn, whose name in Japanese means great warrior, Takeo, and he's that. Those young, boys are really are, good. Yeah. Those young boys have been trying to, to <laughs> wage war here today. They're running up against some real big running backs, but they've been hanging in there. Second down. Steelers need 21. They pick up the blitz. And the connection is made as going out at the ball is Will Blackwell, a second year receiver. A 12 yard gain on the play but still because of the penalty way short of the first down it's at the 20 they need 10 on third down. This is a good route just a bad footwork at the corner by Hawkins kind of stumbled his feet a little bit. Also one of the reasons he gives that play up is that it's such so long for the first down he knew it wasn't anywhere near it so he took no chances. Artrell Hawkins is the rookie cornerback from the University of Cincinnati that the Steelers have worked on all day. Look at that blitz. They pick it up. Long ball. Charles Johnson. And it's separate. They're going to call an interference foul, though, on Thomas Randolph, number 20. Official right on top of the play. It will be a first down for the Steelers. That's big. That is huge. First of all, Thomas Randolph doesn't know where the ball is and underthrow he knows it's an underthrow Pass interference number 20 defense that's a first down so he simply doesn't know where to turn he doesn't know whether should I turn inside or outside and underthrow is a very dangerous play for a defensive back he basically loses position on the ball but it's a big play the penalty yardage on third down gives the Steelers a first down in the drive as they drive on down by a point in the fourth quarter 18 17 Huntley nothing and again Ryan Simmons it was the 17th player picked in the draft in the last first round last June next to him is the 12th pick to Keo Spikes the Auburn linebacker number 51 Brian Simmons is in charge of not only making plays like that the guy look at him he's calling the huddle. A rookie yeah. is the quarterback of this Cincinnati Bingo defense because of injuries to Tumulty. Simmons with his first start is in for Tom Tumulty who's out for the season with a knee injury. Hey, this Cincinnati defense came into the game ranked 29th in the NFL but they're inspired today making plays all over the field. With 11-14 to go, they slap the ball back at Watch Cordell the, Stewart. Watch the top of your screen. It's the old man, number 96, Clyde Simmons, playing volleyball with that football from uh, Cordell Stewart's throw. And he told us in our meeting yesterday that these young guys, you know, playing with all these rookies, Artrell Hawkins, uh, Takeo Spikes, Brian Simmons, it makes him feel young again. He's bouncing around and jumping around. That was Reiner Wilson who got the hit in just as he released the ball. Stewart fires strike inside the 45 yard line. Will Blackwell comes up with the ball and the Steelers have a first down. A 17 yard gain on the play. I tell you I just can't keep up with the big plays. There's a big play on defense and then Cordell answers with a big play. It's a big play on the other side of the ball and then I mean it's just it's been back and forth. It's been crazy. Really has. Can you top this? Two quarterbacks dueling. Neil O'Donnell playing against the team he led to the Super Bowl two years ago. Playing against the Steelers for the first time as a Bengal. Cordell Stewart, who's slumped this year with his breakout game today. That one came in on the one hop, incomplete. Clyde Simmons again coming hard on the rush. The Bengals are blitzing every play, the Steelers are blitzing every play. 
The Cincinnati Bengals defense you know it's a mirror image of what they do in Pittsburgh so you know that's the reason we see we're seeing a lot of these blitzes picked up even though there's a lot of blitzing there's not a lot of sacking. See Clyde Simmons a 13 year veteran number 11 on the all time sack list 110 and he's been close to getting some today. Constant pressure on Cordell Stewart. Richard Huntley turns it wide. And from way back a penalty marker is fired in and here's another one. This has been an absolute battle. Game started out with pleasantries before the kickoff. Neil O'Donnell saying hi to Cordell Stewart and his coach Bill Cower. And that ended as soon as they blew the whistle and kicked the ball. Something strange happened when they started the game. <laughs> A funny thing happened when they actually kicked it off. They got after it and haven't stopped. Holding number 81. Offense. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 47. Penalties offset. Second down. Well, they don't sound like they offset. He said, I think he said 47. There isn't one. Yeah, there's not a Cincinnati. Let me see who could he have. Might have been 27. Artrell Hawkins. That's who he meant. You know, those two penalties, one's holding, one's unnecessary roughness. They don't sound like the offset. Here's a guy, Artrell Hawkins, who didn't even make first team all conference at the University of Cincinnati. He's starting as a rookie in the NFL and playing well. Late bloomer. Second down and 10, and Cordell goes down. Gets up and then takes another hit. Tripped on his way back. And this uh, Bengal defense continues to come at Cordell Stewart with a vengeance. And that was about as all out blitz as you can get. Because uh, there was no one. You see him strip back on. Uh, on one of his linemen's legs. Looks like. Uh, Fenneca. Number 65 on his way back he clipped his. Quarterback's leg. Big play now. Steelers trailing. 18 to 17. Still a lot of time. 9.32 to play. They need 17. Throwing a catch. This is Fred McAfee. The special teams demon, but he's taken down by Spikes. Akio Spikes, who uh, his coach Bruce Coslett calls a guided missile. There he is with the 21 inch neck. Guy called by the coach at Auburn, Terry Bowden, maybe the finest young man we've ever had in the program, in addition to being one of our all time great football players. Look at this shot, the smother shot, the absolute collapse from Clyde Simmons on Cordell Stewart. Both of these quarterbacks have been really banged around today. Big time. Pounded. And yet they keep standing in. Now the Steelers have to punt the ball. Greg Myers is back, sure handed. He lets it happen. The Steelers are there to down the ball at the one yard line. Extraordinary special teams play. The NFL on CBS continues in a moment. I felt that the turnovers were going to be the key to this game. Pittsburgh has one turnover, the fumble by Huntley when Bettis went out in the second quarter. Bengals have not turned the ball over today. In fact, they've turned it over only once all season. And the quarterback Neil O'Donnell and the wide receivers Darnay Scott and Carl Pickens have kept the Bengals in this game. Some good running by Corey Dillon, but it's been the big plays from O'Donnell. But O'Donnell's been spectacular. Building his numbers, 15 of 19 throwing for 220 yards and two touchdowns. But now the uh, Bengals are just trying to get out of jail and get some room to operate as they were pinned back on their one-yard line. Levon Kirkland. The all pro linebacker 99 made that stop. Kirkland said that what inspires him more than anything else is the name Kirkland on the back. He likes to look at in his locker because it represents all the Kirklands, all eight children, his mother and dad back in South Carolina. He carries the Kirkland name out of the field and nobody plays his position better as Darn A. Scott is unable to hold on to a fastball thrown by Neil O'Donnell. Well, that's the first mistake by a wide receiver. On the Bengals because they have been splendid. 
And this is just, you know, he got the right defense. He had a three deep zone. He's got Carnell Lake playing way off of him. That is simply a drop. Right call, right defense. The play was not executed. They got to eliminate the drops at this point. Holding to a one-point lead. Backed up near your own end zone. Hand up. Corey Dillon cuts in. Across the 10 and out to the 15-yard line. He has a first down for the Bengals. And their home stadium sold out erupts. I love that play. It happened so quickly. The quarterback sprints leading the runner to the hole and that's the reason he got to the outside so quickly. O'Donnell his numbers over the years make him one of the most effective passers in NFL history. He has 96 career touchdown passes to 54 career interceptions a tremendous touchdown interception ratio. Quarterback rating is 81, which makes him 18th all time. Damn. They go right back to the same play, but the very fast Steeler defense is there to chop it. And now, while we have a moment, we're going to New York and the Jim Nance. Jim? All right, Mr. Cricky. A lot of folks started out with this game today. Let's show you, as a matter of record, Kansas City's on the board at last. Late third quarter, Gerback to his Michigan mate. Derek Alexander 37 to 7 in fact we can add a field goal as we speak 37 10 now back to you. Thanks Jim. Big third down run for the first down and the first down run after that is stopped now it is second down and almost 10 for the Bengals. Here's a blitz. Lathan Flowers coming high. Look at that hit by Kirkland. Here's a guy playing linebacker 6'1 275. He's bigger than any of the down linemen. In the great years of the Steelers when they won four championships, four Super Bowls in a six year period. And as fast as the defensive backs back in that era. This is a guy that can do four, six, four, seven. And just a wonderful guy to talk oh, to. Oh, man. He walks in the room. Uh, he looks like a winner. Second round draft choice out of Clemson. He said nobody really recruited him from his small high school team in Lamar, South Carolina. Except for Clemson, and now O'Donnell is sacked, and the penalty marker is thrown in. Another Steelers standout, Jason Gilden, a 255-pound linebacker. All the Bengal linebackers are first-round draft choices. All their starters, none of the Steeler linebackers are. But they all play like all-stars, those Steelers. Well, they pick up the flag here. I guess the the guy that was. Uh, the player made the tackle. The player that was being held made the tackle, so they picked up the flag. And now in his own end zone to punt, Lee Johnson. Taylor's could come out of this with very good field position. They got their best kick returner back today. He's been out since the preseason. Jaheen Arnold. They're fracturing collarbone. This is Arnold at the 50. Penalty marker, blocking foul against the Steelers. 38 yard punt a seven yard return but it looks like the Steelers are going to be set back on a holding call. But there has been a lack of discipline throughout the league. When it comes to special teams play guys holding on kick returns you see uh, Bill Cowher screaming at somebody. When you see holding number 29 during the return 10 yard penalty first down time out. Coach Cower starting to reach the boiling point. His Steelers down by one. First down and ten at their 46-yard line. Down by a point in the fourth quarter. Stewart hands off. Huntley runs. He gets some and works for some more. And he's ahead for a gain of almost seven yards. Don Cricky with Beasley Reese. When we talked with all the Bengal players and coaches yesterday, the same sentiment rang through it. That they have to have this game, even though it's only the fifth game of the season, going one and four probably kills their playoff chances. Uh, no, they they have to have this game, and you can see it in their play. I mean, we've seen some tremendous plays up and down the field, especially Neil O'Donnell. I think he responded to the challenge better than anybody out there on the football field right now. You know, the Steelers wanted to get him. He's not letting them. O'Donnell has played brilliantly, brilliantly for Cincinnati. Came to the Steelers in 1990. His first coach was Chuck Knoll. And uh, Bill Cowher came after the Knoll's retirement in 92. And it's been good times 
right through both coaches for Steelers and their fans. Noel with four Super Bowl wins. Neil O'Donnell said one thing he learned from Noel when he scored his first touchdown, he was jumping up and down. Said he got a stare from Noel and some words saying, hey, you're in this league to score touchdowns and to throw them. They're getting paid to do that. Don't get too excited. <laughs> hey, yeah, act like you expected to do it. All out blitz, they pick it up. Stewart throws on the run, gets Courtney Hawkins. That quick wide receiver from Michigan State comes back at the ball. He's played superbly on a third and short. He's ahead for five and a Steeler first down. Well, this is a very decisive move by Cardell Stewart. This is a planned play. When you roll out to the right, you really can't go anywhere else but to the right sideline, and he delivers a bullet. Cardell can throw bullets. 6'1, 212 pounds. Just 25 years old. He'll be 26 next week. Counted for 32 touchdowns last year in his first season as a full time starter. Huntley in for Jerome Bettis, who twisted a knee in the second quarter. Bettis was rolling. The bus was churning out the yards. Had a 13 yard touchdown run before he went out. Been on the sideline the whole second half in uniform. Does not appear to be a serious injury. Huntley appears to have learned a lot watching Jerome Bettis. I mean, the guy keeps his feet churning, he does not come down with the first hit. Uh, when he comes to the sideline, Jerome Bettis acts like his personal running back coach, giving him little tips. Yeah, he's been encouraging every between every offensive sequence. Here is the handoff and Huntley taking that counseling well. Bangs over tacklers just like Bettis would do. There's Jerome Bettis, man who came within one lousy eight pin of bowling the 300 game last summer. 299 he hit. Now uh, watch this at the end. Here's what I mean. He gets hit right here. That's a solid hit. That he runs through and dives forward for another four yards. That is a very serious run. And I think Jerome Bettis is cheering for the guy. <laughs> well, he is. Like Jim Sweeney, the veteran Steeler, said one thing about this Steeler team everybody cares about everybody else. Right. Slash, they called him. He has 66% of the Steelers' offense today. 254 yards. They're waiting for the breakout game. And in this beautiful Sunday afternoon in Cincinnati, he has it. After a spectacular season a year ago, hand off to Huntley. A man who's been hunted hard by those linebackers. Bengal defense rating out number 29 in the league through four weeks of play. They had the bye week last week, but not playing like it today, as time is becoming a major factor now. 2.13 to play. You know, it appears as if Pittsburgh is going to be very conservative. Run the ball and just get closer and closer and closer to that field goal try the field goal that will put them ahead. They'll try to drain the clock as they try to pick up another first down or so. So as not to leave Cincinnati and Neil O'Donnell very much time on the back end. This is it. And there is a, it has come to this. Yes it has Norm <laughs> Johnson. He's seen the pressure kicks before a 16 year veteran from UCLA. He is six for eight this season. He has hit today for the Steelers. Uh, Red or odd score 18 17. Cincinnati missed an extra point. Bad snap. Bengals dig in. Stewart gets behind his off pro center Dawson and hands to Huntley. Second down and eight. Not a whole lot going on. Bengals shut it down again at the seven at the 22 yard line. And the clock now winds down to 205 to play. Well, here's a phrase that young Richard Huntley is hearing from the sideline. He's hearing it in the huddle. He's hearing it from every veteran on the team. Don't fumble. <laughs> don't Just <laughs> don't you fumble. Well, he fumbled in his first carry today, and ever since then he's had two arms on the ball much of the time. And he fumbled in a similar position. Yeah, exactly. They the were team going was in. About at the 12, 15 yard line going in. That's right. At the time he fumbled, it was a 10-3 game Pittsburgh, and they looked to be ready to take a 17-3 lead, which might have put the lights out on yeah, the team. Could have been the knockout yeah, punch. Could have been the knockout punch. So his fumble probably allowed Cincinnati to hang in there and to stay encouraged. The amazing success story of the Steelers continues, though. Here's a team coming in rated 30th in the league in pass offense starting the day, 28th in overall offense, averaging 12 and a half points a game on offense. And yet they're three and one as Bill Cowher said yesterday I'll take it because our passing game is going to get better. 
And it did today. Cordell Stewart, his team down by one. 2.05 to play. Third down. They pick up the blitz. The ball is slapped back. And it's fourth down, and Norm Johnson will be called on now to hit a long one. And if he does, even then, the Bengals will have a lot of time to get downfield because they too have a very good long range place kicker in Doug Pelfrey. I would run that play with Terry Bradshaw. There's no way in the world I throw this ball over the middle of the field at this stage of the game with the young quarterback. I would have run Cardell Stewart in that moment. You've got a man there with some vertical in Ashley Ambrose. <laughs> I mean, man, that would have been a quarterback draw, man. There's no way I would have tried that pass. There's a 40-yard field goal attempt with 2:01 left to play, and Mike Tomczak, the 14-year veteran from Ohio State, backup quarterback and the holder, he sees something he didn't like, so he calls a timeout. Critical kick. If they make it, they take the lead by two. Well, this is the game. Two minutes left in this football game, and the way Corey Dillon has been running. They missed this kick and Cincinnati will be able to bleed out the clock. Yeah Boy, Dylan has run well and uh, even if they make the kick though Cincinnati still in the game. Well if they make it right now Cincinnati will have two minutes to go down and kick their own field goal. Pittsburgh over the years is 12 and 15 here in Cincinnati but in the Cower years they're five and one. The phenomenal success of the Steelers under Bill Cower who'd never before been a head coach. Coming to the Steelers in 92 for the legend Chuck Noll. Six previous seasons as head man of the Steelers. They've been in the playoffs all six years. And in the Super Bowl once. When they were quarterbacked by Neil O'Donnell. And Neil O'Donnell has been tremendous today for the Bengals. Yes, he has. And you know, you were talking about Bill Cower, you know, the guys from Pittsburgh. His mother still lives about 10 minutes from the stadium. Tom yep. Donahue runs the organization from Pittsburgh. Yep. I mean that's the way they do it. It's like a, it's a family. It's like the old time NFL. It's it all emanates from the Rooney's. Dan Rooney the president of the team still walks to work every day to Three Rivers Stadium. Yep. On the house that he grew up in. With his four brothers. They're going to get a new football stadium in Pittsburgh in 2001. I was talking to Art Rooney the second. And I hope they call it Art Rooney Stadium. I think everybody in Pittsburgh does. But is he one of the, George, he and George Hallis, the George Washingtons, if you will, of the National Football League, when uh, they kept hope alive in the lean years. And Bill Cower, who grew up a lifelong Steeler fan, gets his dream job coaching the Steelers, and he certainly delivered the goods every year. Well, he's watching for a kick right now. You got some good people lining up to do it. From this, distance, from this distance, he's two of four this season. Wow, great hole by Tom Zach. Mike Tom Zach picked up a bit of an errant snap, gets it down. Johnson delivers, and with 1.56 to play, the Steelers are back in the lead 20 to 18. The Bengals will get it when we come back and the NFL continues on CBS. Tricky with Beasley Reese and Neil O'Donnell set to go back to the controls of the Cincinnati offense to try and get his team at least in field goal position as the Bengals trail the Steelers by two with 156 to play. Now how fitting would this finish be for Neil O'Donnell if he could bring this team he's already played magnificently. And if he could drive his team down into field goal range and give them a shot at the victory against his old mates, it would be phenomenal. Look at his numbers. The guy has had a super game against his old team. The youngest of nine, Neil O'Donnell, has hit 15 of 20 for 220 yards and two touchdowns. Here comes Tremaine Matt. He ran a kickoff back 97 yards for a touchdown in the last game. And a penalty marker is fired in. As we have happy Steelers out there. That is Fred McAfee 25 saluting someone perhaps himself for another good special teams play. Well if the penalty is against the uh, receiving team. Usually it is. Well it once again. Holding 75. Half the distance to the goal. It's ridiculous. I mean I've been talking about this all game. These guys don't have the discipline. You know and when a guy's behind you you just 
you don't hit him. And uh, coming up next on CBS, John Elway and the undefeated Denver Broncos travel to Seattle to battle Warren Moon and the Seahawks. That's next here on CBS. Also, the Jets play the Rams at St. Louis. The Chargers and the Raiders hook up at Oakland. Check your local listings for the second game in your area. Oh, Donald's in his end zone. His team down by two. He makes a connection out to the 12-yard line. Diving at the ball with little Eric Bieniemy. The Bengals have zero timeouts. So what they have to do is get people out of bounds to stop the play. And now they get the penalties. Steelers could have left early while well, everybody's pointing at each other. Well, under the new rule, if the defensive lineman drew the offensive lineman off, it's against the Steelers. Referee uh, Tom White and his crew doing a terrific job all day long. Tom's been on Mike a lot. They've had to call a lot of penalties. Neutral zone infraction, number 76 defense, five yard penalty. It's against Keevan Henry, yep. the best blues singer in the National Football League. He can warble. Oh, he can bring it. He can rush the passer also. Yes, he can. But he can sing the blues. Here we go. Okay. Got plenty of time. He's hoping to have his former teammate Neil O'Donnell and the Bengals singing the blues here if they can get some pressure on and sack him. O'Donnell is absolutely brilliant under a pressure. They're sending blitzes out there from here, from there, from everywhere. The blitzes are coming from the Steelers. O'Donnell looks, throws. He gets an outlet man and Carl Pickens who gets out of bounds. 128. 126 now left to go. I say that's another great job by Neil O'Donnell. Neil O'Donnell actually saw his blocker knocked down, so he knew there was a free man, yet he still stood in there, took the shot, and got the pass off. And Carl Pickens has been phenomenal. Just look at him, just kind of dancing around, waiting on something to happen. And remember, this is a guy who may leave this football team if he doesn't see some real serious moves made to improve their chances of winning. They told us that yesterday. He's run out of patience. Here's O'Donnell throwing downfield, and the ball is broken up beautifully. Dwayne Washington giving away some size, goes way up against uh, one of the great leapers in the league, in addition to one of the great receivers in Pickens. Pickens, a 7 1 high jumper at University of Tennessee. Usually, when they go up for a jump ball, he gets it. This is a fantastic route. The ball has to be thrown a little bit before Neil O'Donnell wanted to throw it, and that was a very good defensive play. Four down territory. The pressure builds. Third down and ten. Bengals are seven of thirteen on third down conversions. Down pass. The enemy is caught and dropped back inside the 15 yard line. Now you remember the Bengals are without timeouts. They're out of them. And the clock ticks down. Well there's no reason to uh, punt. No, oh, you can't do that. Nothing. There's nothing to punt about now. What you got to do here. It's fourth down. They need ball. 12. You got to get it downfield. Long ball thrown downfield. Pickens looks back at it. Pickens gets it. He's in open field inside the 40, and he's out of bounds at the 35-yard line. This is one of the great games, and we've seen many absolutely spectacular plays. That's Carl the Pickens ball. a 50 yard play on fourth down and 12. That's the high ball I'm talking about. How about a high ball? Call 911. <laughs> Just throw it up there and let your seven foot one inch high jumper bring it down. We've seen some we've seen everything. Yeah that we've was as everything. good as we've seen 12 catches for Pickens 179 yards. Now it's first and ten at the 35 yard line Bengals down by two near side Corey Dillon bangs inside the 30. Oh man you didn't see that at the end of the play. Poor little Dwayne Washington. Let me tell you something he'll have to go in for a readjustment at the end of this watch this. Pow. <laughs> and then kind of walk he, has, on he had some conversation. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's unbelievable. Now you add 17 yards to the line of scrimmage for the distance of a field goal. So this ball is now at the 27 yard line. You have 41 yard attempt from here. But they still have three more downs on this set and they could get more. 42 seconds left. Here's a safety blitz. They pick it up. Dylan runs. No timeouts. He's down to the 25 yard line. And the clock. 
Kicking away. All right, everybody, staying cool. Coach yep. is rushing them up to the line of scrimmage so they can get another play or two in. Bruce Cosett saying, y'all be cool. He might just slam the ball down. They got a first down. That's this. He's lofting the ball to Pickens. He's got the ball. He's fouled, and he steps in for a touchdown. Penalty marker down, but it looked to us like Pickens was fouled. You talk about cool. He caught the ball, then strided in. This is Bruce. Oh, what a football game. This is Bruce Cosmos' finest hour. I'll tell you about that play in a minute. It's on the defense. Touchdown. The play goes. It's a touchdown for Cincinnati. The play Coslett called was for Neil O'Donnell to act like they were going to rush in, spike the ball, and stop it and bring in the field goal unit. Instead of doing that, look at this. See how the linemen don't even get well, set. when he catches it. He's fouled. He knows that. Now watch what he does. Just but Don, the linemen like just stood around. They I didn't know. even get set. Yeah. What a sucker play. <laughs> well, we saw Dan Marino do it to the Jets a few years ago. So the Bengals somehow some way in a game they felt they had to win drive down the field and get the third touchdown throw of the day from Neil O'Donnell the second to Pickens. What a day for O'Donnell and Pickens. Absolutely time capsule material. Pickens with 13 catches for 204 yards. You see the offensive linemen all just stand there. The defense thought they were going to throw the ball down and bring in the field goal <laughs> unit. Look at Pickens though. He's talking to this oh, guy while man. he's sashaying into the end zone. Sashay is the perfect descriptive word. <laughs> But we're not done. We have 14 seconds left. There's no telling what might happen. We've seen some stuff. O'Donnell, 20 of 26. How about that? For 288 yards and three touchdowns against his old team. Revenge is his, says Neil O'Donnell. Well, we're, let's play these last 14 seconds out because in this one, you don't know. The executive producer of CBS Sports is Terry Ewart, coordinating producer of NFL football, Larry Cavalina. Today's game produced by Al Szymanski, directed by J.D. Hansen. The NFL Today, produced by Eric Mann and directed by Bob Matina. Don Crickey with Beasley Reese, 14 seconds to go in Cincinnati. And the Bengals off to a 1 and 3 start for the third straight year, felt privately that they were gone from any playoff hope if they lost this game. Well, the coaches say you want to win a game, cover this kick now. They covered it. Ten seconds left. I'll tell you, though, well, you got to get in the end zone, though. It's a 25-20 to 20 game. Long field goals are just allowed out at this point. Coming up next, John Elway and the undefeated Broncos travel to Seattle to go against the Seahawks, a team with 25 sacks so far this year. Beware John Elway in the kingdom. That's next here on CBS. Also, second games include the Jets against the Rams at St. Louis, the Chargers against the Raiders at Oakland. Check your local listings. Now this one, marred by a lot of penalties, has been an absolute thing of beauty when you look at the whole picture. Cordell Stewart, this could be it. This will be it. Long ball. This is like the throw at Michigan. There's Charles Johnson going up, and he comes down empty. We welcome all of you as we come now to Cincinnati. Don Crickey with Beasley Reese with a second to go. The Cincinnati Bengals in a game they felt they had a win drove down the field from deep in their own end, getting a big play to Carl Pickens on a fourth and 12 to keep the drive alive. And then getting a touchdown throw from Neil O'Donnell to Carl Pickens to come from behind and take the lead with seconds to play. Those of you joining us, Carl Pickens has put together a 12 catch, 170 yard, 79 yard day, and Neil O'Donnell has been magnificent. Another long look at the arm on this kid. Stewart lets it rip. It's in the air, and it's almost caught as Courtney Hawkins dove at the ball. But he comes up empty, and Bruce Coslett. In jubilation has finally beaten the Steelers a team that his Bengals have had big problems with 
And Bill Cower is he's got to be stunned. Old friends. And Tom Zach and O'Donnell former teammates you, you got to just really you can't say enough about O'Donnell's performance. He knew the Steeler defense was waiting for him. But he was the guy that made the plays and won the game with Pickens. Well with all the trash talking this week. Neil O'Donnell made sure he didn't say anything but I guess he did all of his talking over the last three hours. He was magnificent. Did it right on the field. We're going to be coming back here to Cincinnati in a moment where the Cincinnati Bengals have defeated the Pittsburgh Steelers 25 to 20. Jim Nance.